Hey guys, in this tutorial, we take a look at how to move layers in 3D space as well as some basic camera functions. Okay, to get started, open up Anime Studio and draw out some scenery. It doesn't have to be very detailed, but it should be two or three layers in depth. As you can see here, I have layers for my clouds, mountains, ground, and sky. And so that should work um, when we go through and do the camera movements. It'll give us some idea of how to do the depth and so on. So just go ahead and do that, and then we can continue on. Now there's two different ways you can move the camera around in Anime Studio. First, you'll notice that there is a camera section on your toolbar. You'll use these tools, such as the zoom, the track, and so on, to animate camera movements in your movie. This is what your audience will see when you use these tools. The workspace options allow you to basically zoom in on your workspace, move the workspace around, and even see an orbital view of the workspace for your own reference. This is used for you when you're building your set and so on. You can rearrange how the view looks all through the workspace and it doesn't affect the way the movie looks. So with that said, let's click on the orbit tool so we can see what the stage looks like right now. If you come over here to your stage and you just click your mouse button once, the camera will shoot up and it'll kind of give you an overhead view of what's going on. Now, if you click and drag your mouse, you can pan the camera around to see what your set currently looks like. And as you can see, everything is pretty much um, in one field. The mountains, the sky, the ground are all positioned in the same spot. So in order for us to get some accurate camera pans and zooms and depth of field and so on, we're going to want to adjust the depth of each of these items so that the mountains are more in the background, that the ground is further up towards the camera, that one cloud is behind the mountain, the other one is in front, and so on. So that's what we're going to concentrate on first. The easiest way to do this is to adjust the Z values of each layer. So let's start with the ground layer first. So come over here to your layers panel and click on the ground layer or whatever layer that you have chosen for this demonstration. And what we need to do now is select the translate layer tool. Now you'll notice at the top that we have X, Y, and Z positions that we can use to tweak here. If we go to up to the Z option and type in a number, let's just type in two for instance and hit enter. You'll notice now that the ground shoots out from the set that we have established here. So the ground is now more in the foreground and we can see this and we can even adjust our view further if we again go to the orbit tool and we just click and drag and move around. We can see that now that the ground of course is distant of that of the sky and everything else. So now we can do the same for other elements on the stage and we can tweak we can tweak these accordingly. We might have to adjust the distance here in a bit if we realize that the ground is too far out and whatnot. But we'll go with it for right now and we can adjust accordingly later. Next, I want to move the mountains a little bit forward, just away from the sky a little bit. Just a little bit. So let's come over here to the mountains. Click on translate layer. Then go up to the Z value and choose, let's just say 0.1 or 0.2. I'll just put 0.2. Now the mountains are a little bit away from the sky and that'll work. Now the sky and this cloud, the background cloud are fine where they are, but we'll need to um, tweak the position of this cloud right here because as of right now it's supposed to be ahead of the mountains. So let's come over here to cloud one on the layers box. Choose translate layer. 
And let's bring the cloud forward to point three because the mountains are at point two. So at point three, the cloud will then be ahead of the mountains. And of course, we can see this again by just taking the orbit tool and looking. And as we can see, it's kind of hard to see because everything is 2D, but you can tell that the cloud is ahead of the mountains. So now we can go ahead and adjust our camera so that we can get a view of the scene as how we want the audience to see it. Okay, now let's click on Reset View for our workspace to bring it back to where it needs to be. Now, this is what the audience is currently seeing. Because we extended the ground out so far, our camera can't see it. It's actually behind the camera right now. And just to use the orbit view again, I'm just gonna click the orbit view. Your camera is positioned right here. That's what you're seeing. That's what that blue uh, arrow is. That's your camera. So. Of course, it's behind the camera, so we got to move the camera back. And you can do this by using the track camera option. So let's click that. And what we can do here now is go up to the Z value on the track camera, and we can move it back. You'll remember that we put the ground at 2. Well, let's put the camera at 2.5 and see what that does you'll notice that the camera is now back further. And if we go to reset view, we can see now that the ground um, is kind of in shot, but not entirely. So let's click on the track camera position again, and maybe let's put it back to three and see what that does. And we're getting more of a view now, so let's try four. And that um, will probably be a pretty good position. We can maybe just put, pull it back just a little bit though to about maybe 3.7. That will work. You'll notice now though that we have a problem in that when we basically um, push everything back or rather we push the camera back, the assets in the background are now smaller. So we're now gonna have to readjust the size of those. So let's click on the mountains layer come over here to the scale layer tool then just hold in shift and just enlarge the mountains so that they are at an accurate size and we can even use the translate layer tool now and just nudge them down a bit so that they're underneath our ground and we'll have to do the same now for the cloud at least for the first cloud since it's in the foreground so we'll just click that cloud and then take the scale layer option and just nudge it up and then take our translate layer and move it in so that it's in front of the cloud or in front of the mountain, I should say. Now we'll of course need to adjust the sky size too because right now it's not taking up the space at all as you can see for the boundaries of our document. So let's click on the sky layer, choose scale layer, hold in shift, and just resize it so that it fills up that space. And then of course, we could even maybe even make it a little bit bigger too, in case if we do do those camera pans and such later on, if you decide to, you'll have a little bit more room to work with and you won't see, you know, the edges of the document. The sky will cover it all, basically. And two, if we wanted to, because the sky is bigger now um, and all the other assets are bigger, we might want to also adjust the second cloud. So we'll just do that and then use the translate layer option to move it downward. So now, we go to our workspace orbit view again and take a look. We can see, of course, that everything is basically on its own plane of existence, basically. You have the ground in the foreground, you have your mountains, the skies behind that, and so on. So now you're probably asking, what's the point to all this? Why do we want to create depth with our layers? Well, 
Let me show you. First, let's reset our view. And next, let's take the track camera tool. Now make sure that you're on frame zero so you don't screw with any of your animation on your timeline. And just click and drag your camera. You'll notice as you do this that it's kind of hard to see because of my colors, but that the foreground moves faster than that of the background. And that is one example where this can come in handy. We can also do depth of field effects. And let's say you do a zoom effect. When you zoom, it'll create a more accurate representation of that. You'll have things zoom by before and faster than that of things in the background. So it's just really another way to add some depth to your project. And it creates, again, kind of an almost 3D look when you are doing your pans and so on. And you can actually do 3D effects too in Anime Studio. And so this type of thing would come in handy for that as well. <clears throat> so that is one reason why you'd want to create depth with your layers. And in future tutorials, I can go over more camera movements and effects and so on, and we can check those out. Anyway, I hope you guys found this helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.